This is the 2023 Honda Accord. This is the hybrid sport trim level we're going to be taking a look at today. And the question to answer is, is this 2023 Honda Accord starting to gain popularity with the general public as far as Honda buyers go? When a new vehicle comes out, it's often looked down upon, frowned upon, and people don't like it for a while until they look at it for a while and see it in person. And especially in this case, which is really going to be a big focus in today's video, drive it. The driving experience of this model is definitely good. It's very solid, it's very enjoyable, and I'll explain why that is when we get out on the test drive. I borrowed this model from my friends at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana. If you would like to know more about this particular model or any other Honda model, check out the link down in the description of the video. The exterior color on this model is platinum white. Obviously, it has black interior. The starting price, the base price, for the Accord Hybrid is $31,895. This particular model has a sticker price of $32,895. For 2023, the Accord has a lower profile, it's supposed to look lower, have a little bit wider stance. And you're going to see that accentuated by the, well, a little more squared off than the 10th generation front end. Not completely, it still has some roundness to it, some nice character lines whether it's on the hood, on the fenders, anywhere you look. And the LED daytime running lights definitely help the new design of the headlight housing, which is a little bit longer, a little bit more slender, we'll say. You also will have the same thing with the upper grill. You're gonna have some gloss black there, the Honda logo in the center. And one thing I personally really like here, as far as the cosmetics go, is going to be the design of these front air curtains that allow air to flow through the front end to improve aerodynamics. One thing that hasn't changed from the 10th to the 11th generation of the Accord is that it is only available in front wheel drive. Tell Honda if you would like to see all wheel drive at some point in the future down in the comments section. And let's talk tire and wheel size. 235 on the width. Gonna have a decent amount of tread making its way or meeting the ground, I should say. And the 40 series sidewall. Not too tall, but it's not low profile either. So that's going to help with a smooth ride quality wrapped around the 19 inch wheels. Now, in this case, on the hybrid sport trim level, you will not find the turn signal indicators built into the manually folding. Yes, so that nobody asks about it. I have had people ask, how do you manually, manually fold the mirrors? How do you say manually without getting tongue twisted? Let's see if I can do that and the power adjustable side view mirrors as well. And we'll take a quick look at the remote. The two things a lot of people like to know about is number one, does it have turn signal indicators built into the side view mirrors? You know it doesn't, but the other thing, does it have remote start? You know that is the case in this situation. Now you'll notice that I can walk up and open the gas door very easily. If we lock the vehicle, which I can't do at the moment because I have the ignition on, but when you lock the vehicle, it does lock that gas door. And the look that is meant to be more sleek for 2023, we have a nice rounded line across the top of the vehicle working its way on to the sloped rear window. And obviously we're gonna finish things off here on the trunk lid with the, well, being the sport trim level, that black gloss black spoiler. And we take a look at the rear you're definitely going to see a big difference here as far as the taillight design goes. Gone is the stapler or crab claw look. Tell me what you think about that. And while there are so many changes for the new model year with this 11th generation of the Accord, one thing that does not change is the cargo capacity. It's still a very plentiful 16.7 cubic feet, so a lot of space. We can use that release to allow us to fold down the rear seats. Obviously you can do this on both sides, but I'm only going to do it on one, but that helps to maximize cargo capacity. And for those who want to see the proof of what I said earlier about this being a locking gas door, when you lock the vehicle, the gas door does indeed lock. That is a 12.8 gallon gas tank, by the way, and it's responsible for feeding the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that is under the hood paired with the dual motor hybrid electric system. It's supposed to be more efficient and provide a sportier driving experience for 2023. It has a 
total combined horsepower rating of 204. The torque numbers come in at 247. It's mated to an eCVT. And how about those all important MPGs? That kind of rhymed unintentionally. But here are the numbers, 46 city, 41 highway, 44 combined. And Honda says you should use an estimated 2.3 gallons of gas per every 100 miles you drive. Now here's the big advantage to what we have here is that you have the ability to not concern yourself with how much charge capacity you have because when the hybrid, two hybrid motors, the dual motor system for this car doesn't have the proper electric charge or we should say charge capacity, let's get that right before somebody has a fit in the comments section, it does happen sometimes. Well, that means the Accord will run off of the gas motor. So that's a good thing. You don't have to worry about what people with full EVs do. If you don't have enough charge capacity, as long as you have enough gas in that 12.8 gallon gas tank, you're going to be in good shape no matter what happens. And as we look in through the driver's side door into the back seat area, what is the armrest like? You know, this is really the worst way to test for how soft it is. It's like I'm testing the doneness of a steak right there. But when you put your arm on there, it actually feels better than it does when you use the poke test. You'll have to try that for yourself and not just take my word for it. We do have a door bin that's large enough here on these rear doors to be able to put a bottle or snacks in, whatever the case is. And a nice roomy rear seating area. It may not have a lot of functionality back here, no rear air conditioning vents, no USB connectivity, but there is a way to remedy that. We'll show you that when we get in the front seat. Also going to have the singular rear seat pocket, but as long as nobody's sitting in this center seat area, got the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. And tell me what your thoughts are. Were you hoping for a panoramic sunroof? We do have the conventional size, which is the only one available for these Accords for 2023. But I can't imagine somebody saying, I don't want to buy that car because it doesn't have a panoramic sunroof. And if you happen to have a door bin snob in your life, in your family, who's going to be riding in your Accord or friend, whatever the case is, well, they better call Shotgun or they better grab the remote from you because the front doors have larger door bins and larger armrests. And when you use the poke test, it actually does feel a little bit softer, but it feels basically the same when you put your arm on there. We have a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat and a manually adjustable passenger seat. Let's hop inside. We'll take a quick look across at the design of the dashboard here. As far as what we have, we'll also have the plentiful of space glove box. No gloves found inside, just the wheel lock key. If you ever need to change a tire or have someone change a tire for you, and you'll see the dual USB ports. We don't have wireless, or excuse me, wireless charging, the wireless charging pad here. But if we did, this is where it would be in this area. But one thing that I think a lot of people are going to like, for those of you who are not fans of push button shifters, you have a good option here in the conventional style shifter right next to the dual cup holders. And we do have our drive mode selector. You can go into E mode right here, EV mode, and then the power parking brake and brake hold mode. And the multitasking lid for the center console that doubles as an armrest, it is very comfortable. I'm gonna take my suction cup out of there. There is plentiful space, and right here, I'm gonna close that just so you can see it closed, but you have the option to use a 12 volt power outlet. So you could use an adapter right there to give your rear seat passengers an option to have the USB connectivity via that adapter. And we'll fold down the sun visor and say hello in the mirror, the vanity mirror right there with the lights. And let's see if the sun is on the side of the vehicle, how far back does the sun visor come? Pretty much far enough to take care of business unless somebody is sitting a lot further back than where I have the seat set right now. And for when the driver wants to exercise that 204 horsepower, there are oh crap handles at all four corners. And it's likely that I don't need to tell you what we have here on the driver's side door. You really can't see it very well anyway because of these windows being freshly tinted. 
but you can see that you can control those power adjustable side view mirrors there and obviously control a lot of other functionality on the vehicle. As I told you, you do have a 10-way adjustable power passenger seat or driver's seat, I should say. That's the passenger seat, Tom. Come on, let's get it right. And if you drop the lever right here, you can adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And we'll hop inside and listen. The Honda Accord greeting for you. And we'll hit push button start and show you the nicely updated and very modern looking digital instrument cluster. You'll notice the likeness of your Accord, just not the same color down there in the center. When you turn the lights on, you're going to know they're on. Not only because, well, at night at least, when it's dark, you'll know they're on. But if you're not sure, you can always look up there and see if you have that illumination or not. And over here, we can also control those headlights. You can also use that thing called the blinker or the turn signal that the kind drivers out there who think about others use to let people know what's going on around them as far as their intentions go. Control for your windshield wipers, and then we're going to have our adaptive cruise control functionality here. Obviously, you can go through a lot of information with the screen right here with the dashboard as far as what you can see. Just so you can see, I'm just scrolling through with the scroll wheel right there just to see what's available. We're not going to touch on every single little thing, but you can see what is there. Now, we don't have paddle shifters here. These are actually for adjusting the regenerative braking that uses kinetic en energy. Oh boy, I need kinetic energy to help regenerate my ability not to be tongue twisted. But that's what you use to control the ability to regenerate power for the hybrid motors, the electric motors, via kinetic energy. And here, the 12.3 inch touchscreen. Very nice looking, very well done. Let's make it a little bit easier to see here if I can get this off of here. A little challenging. My goodness, somebody really made that challenging, didn't they? But there it is. That way, you just have a better look. We'll put that back on when I'm finished, I promise. But you can see what's going on with the vehicle as far as the power flow goes. You do know that we have Apple CarPlay because obviously that was up on the screen right there. And several different great features here as far as what goes on with the vehicle. And yes, you can still have the power flow right there on the right hand side. We're going to have vehicle settings here with a very nice look as far as the graphics go. Honda really has stepped things up a lot in a multitude of ways here with this new Accord, depending on what you want to adjust. I'm not going to go through every single little thing here, but just so you can see what is here and what it looks like, we'll go back to the main screen and go to general settings. And again, you're going to have kind of a similar thing where it looks different from what we saw in the 10th generation of the Accord. And also, what about the rear view camera? We're still going to have that multi-view camera that we've had in the past, just a little bit more responsive in my personal opinion. And one thing that I want to make sure I cover here, let's go through our driving mode. You're going to have econ mode, and then we'll go up to normal mode and sport mode as well. You'll also have the ability to go into individual. We're not going to show that, but you can see what's there as far as how that looks. You also get that information on the dashboard as well as far as your multiple driving modes go. Before we get out on the road for the test drive, I did want to give you a quick sampling of the audio system here. So here you go. Okay, we won't go too long with that, but just wanted to give you the best sampling of what I could for those who may be interested to know. Okay, we're out on the road for our test drive, and I'm going to just be quiet for a few seconds. I'm going to drive in both lanes here because this portion of this road is very rough. It'll give us a good idea on road noise and wind noise, but keep in mind, it is completely silent in here. I have nothing to drown it out whatsoever, so it might seem worse than it really is.
So hopefully that was long enough to give you an idea of what it sounds like here within the interior of this Accord Hybrid Sport. It's actually very quiet. Quiet. If I had the fan speed up on the air conditioner or the radio playing or something going that would actually make a difference in kind of drowning some of that out, even having somebody to talk to or talking hands-free on my cell phone, that would definitely make a big difference. So you can take that for what it is. The thing I like here is that this Accord feels very planted to the road. It feels solid. And when I say that, I don't mean it means it has a harsh ride quality. I just mean that it feels firmly planted to the road. It's stable. That's a good way to put it. So I really like that. And the gas mileage on these Accord hybrids is highly impressive. In fact, I was talking to the president of Holmes Honda before I made this video, and he's been driving one of these for a few days. I don't know how long it's actually been, but long enough to have put some mileage on it and been able to see what happens with the MPGs. And he said even driving it around, driving a little fast at times, just really putting it through its paces, so to speak, still at 42 miles per gallon on his average for MPGs. So that should tell you something about what the capabilities are here with this car. The ride quality is really impressive. It's very comfortable. Uh, everything is very smooth as to how it operates. Uh, the steering wheel is leather wrapped, so it's nice and comfortable. And I like the fact that the technology, which it's been this way for as long as I've been reviewing these Honda vehicles uh, since 2019, the technology is easy to learn. That means it's also easy to use. So for those of you who have had a vehicle for so long that it doesn't have an infotainment screen and all the technology that these vehicles have now, don't be afraid of this. If you're looking at a new Accord and you're saying to yourself, man, I just it's just scary, honestly, for me to buy one of those vehicles because of the fact that that technology is there and there's just so much, it's really not that bad when it's all said and done. In fact, Honda has, I'd say, one of the top vehicles anywhere in the automotive industry that has easy to learn and easy to use technology. Comfortable ride quality, comfortable seating, I, really a very solid vehicle in a multitude of ways. And when you need to go, it goes. I'm not going to go too much, but when you drop the loud pedal, well, I don't know if we really call it a loud pedal, but you drop the pedal to the floor. It gets down the road with absolutely no problem whatsoever. I really believe that Honda has done a great job here. And I think over the course of time, more and more people are going to start to say, you know, I really like the Accord. I like the, third, the 11th generation uh, with what Honda has done, the changes they've made. Obviously, the Accord has been one of the best selling vehicles in the country for a long time in the United States for many, many, many years. So it'll be interesting to see what 2023 brings where that is concerned. So tell me what your thoughts are. Is this new generation, the 11th generation of the Honda Accord for the 2023 model year starting to grow on you? Do you like what you're seeing? Maybe you're starting to consider, well, maybe I do want to trade up to this newer model. Tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments section. I know a lot of you have already said you like what you see. It took a little while, but now all of a sudden your thoughts are changing as to what Honda has done here. I'm always interested to know what your feedback is. I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this 2023 Accord Hybrid Sport for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, and you want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.